so our next speaking of technical, uh, Rob's uh, leading the technical and architecture committee yep. at OpenFog, um, is also an Intel principal engineer. So he's going to give a status overview of where OpenFog currently is and, and share his insights where what he sees in terms of uh, challenges and opportunities. Thank you, Rob. Yep. So apparently Jeff and I color coordinated today. We both have white shirts and jackets. You know, interesting thing. <laughs> So one thing I want to first ask some questions, since I see people looking down. What do sweaty, garlic, stinky, stone fruit, herbal, what do they have in common? Anybody know? Football. What's that? Football. Close. It's actually close. Anybody? Another little hint. What about this? Has anybody ever seen these? Beer, hops. It's how you describe hops. Vastly different things to describe the same thing. So for fog, we have to be very careful how we describe things. Oh, we got some people that know very how we describe things because if we don't, we get vastly different responses. So I'm trying to shake it up a little bit. So who am I? So I'm Rob Swanson. I'm an Intel principal engineer. Been with their company for about 16 years. I'm leading our, our efforts on fog computing, and I'm currently the chair of the technical committee and the architecture framework working group. So the way the consortium works is the technical, commi technical committee drives all the other working groups. The architecture framework's goal is to create a reference architecture and then other things. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics and Computer Science. Um, most of my time at Intel has been around firmware and embedded software, uh, from security even designing some silicon components, which is kind of fun. So some other interesting things about me is uh, I'm a big soccer fan, big football fan. And so I was up last night watching the Sounders make the playoffs. So if any MLS fans here, uh, I was watching that. Another interesting thing about me is I make um, varnish, also known as uh, distilled spirits. But it would be illegal to drink that, so I use it as varnish, clearly. <laughs> and I make beer as well. So that's some interesting things about me. So uh, let's move on to the less interesting things. Or I think more interesting things, actually. Why open fog? What's the point? Well, if you look at what we've talked about today, if we just shove everything to the cloud, eventually that's a non-working model. If there's 50 billion, if there's 60 billion, if there's 2 billion, that much stuff shoving data up to the cloud, processing the data in the cloud, and then shoving back down, it's, it's just not going to work. Uh, so what we see from an open fog perspective is we need to change our thought, our paradigm here. The other thing that was important for myself at Intel, and then also for the consortium, is I saw a bunch of different projects going on in the industry. They're all trying to address the same fundamental problem. And they all have this ability to be divergent. And if you look at what Jeff talked about, how we break that logjam on the market, we need to have that interoperability play. So we have to have a consistency in implementation, a consistency of, of, uh, of industry. And so part of OpenFog's goal is to make this interoperable system. The only way you can do that is align everything together. And that's kind of how we're trying to address OpenFog. So this is like our charter. So as we move forward, so OpenFog shall be synonymous with a, a, a multi-vendor fog computing ecosystem that enables platforms, software, and test beds that spur innovation and make positive differences in our lives. I had a statistics professor that always would always uh, say, let's make a positive difference, because we can all make a difference. But can we make a positive difference? So I hope OpenFog, we can make a positive difference towards computing. To, to do this, there's a couple things that we're doing from an engineering perspective. So I'm an engineer. Most of you are, who here is an engineer in the room? Excellent. We're all engineers. We like to solve problems. A couple of marketing <laughs> folks as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to publish this reference architecture. And then one of the things that's important to realize is that if there's a reference architecture, a reference architecture that's static is not really that good. So we have to use test beds to refine that reference architecture. And that's what we're going to be doing. The other thing that's important is, is this reference architecture has to be scenario driven. One of the things that you'll see on our little sheet here is all about ROI, return on investment. So when you look at fog, fog computing really is about a scenario where latency, performance, and compute really do, do matter. And that's all driven based upon a given scenario. If you just talk about it in the abstract, it's not really that useful. So again, open fog reference architecture is a, is a scenario based reference architecture. And then once we've published this reference architecture, we're going to start standardizing this, whether it be through open source implementation and also our IEEE affiliation. One of the things that I get asked a lot about at Intel is, 
what's this edge thing? What's this fog thing? What's this cloud thing? Because from an, to be honest, from an Intel perspective, it would be awesome if all we did is just keep building out the data centers and keep building out the data centers. You kept shoving everything to the cloud because we have a pretty good market share in data centers right now. So that's great if this broken architecture continues on. But the reality is we can't do that. We have to change our paradigm. And again, it's from that, that many, many billions of things that are out there. So the way you can really see from a fog perspective is the raw processing really does happen at that edge. You have to process that data locally. And as John and some of the others mentioned, you can do things if you put layers in between there. You can start looking at, at profiles or normalization of data. Is this, is this system operating securely? So those are things that can, can happen. But intelligent creation actually happens at the edge, away from those devices for the most part. It's kind of a good scale system here. All right. So the best question is, what's a reference architecture? It's like everybody has a reference architecture. Reference architecture to get here, reference architecture to get there. So we want to make sure that we understand what that means from our perspective. So they tend to be abstract. And so I have a hard time. I'm an engineer. I'm, I don't really think in the abstract terms very well. Most of the people that re, re, you know, take things, they don't work in abstract options very well. So we want to be more specific. But if you look at the, the current architectures out there, you have Rami, Industry 4.0. You have the three-tier architecture. Um, again, that's pretty abstract. And then you have Etsy MEC, or mobile edge computing. Uh, and that's actually a standards-based uh, approach to do uh, carrier-based sharing. But again, again they're, for the most part, they're pretty abstract. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to make the, sure the reference architecture is not left at that abstract level. We bring it more into practice so you can understand what we're doing from an architecture perspective. What are the roles of all the stakeholders in the supply chain? So for example, the, the attack recently that used security cameras to take down parts of Twitter, right? What, what should those SOC designers, should have, what should they have done? What should the system designers done? So those are the types of things we want to address from the architecture. So you can see right here that the goals are really talking about these scenarios that we see here. So transportation, agriculture, buildings and cities, hospitality, uh, visual security and wind farms. These are just some of the scenarios that we're addressing. And when we release the reference architecture, we're actually going to break down uh, one of these and it'll be included with that first reference architecture draft. And then as we, the board gives us more uh, scenarios to do, we'll do via white papers and other things. But our, our RA is really targeted towards those leaders and those people who want to get into these markets and address those scenarios. All, right, all about ROI. And then again, we're going to have multiple test boards, beds for each one of these. For example, visual security, we already have identified three different test beds associated with that one scenario. One of the things that you may have already seen, uh, we published this a while ago, and this is really our pillars. So we broke out the reference architecture. We, we started off with this, what are the generalized themes from an architecture? We went, and we built out these various pillars. And then from that, we went ahead and said, how do we break those pillars down into practice for different systems? So from systems, who are the actors, the stakeholders? Is it the SOC designers, the system designers, the software providers? So we went through each one of these. And so what we saw is these, these pillars were uh, visible throughout that architecture. And so when we release this reference architecture uh, later this year, you'll actually see how these play a role in each of these scenarios. And then one thing Luciana wanted me to mention is what are these top challenges that we have? And so really, for us, a multi-vendor fog ecosystem has to address the technical, societal, and business needs of the software-defined world, of how we build these systems. And if you want to win, it all comes back to the solution. The big thing about IoT is we're past the hype. We're now in execution. You have to have a solution that addresses a real business problem, or you're, you're, just, you're not going to do any work. So really, that's what we're trying to address here. So find the scenarios where latency, compute actually matter show reference architecture, how it applies in practice, so you can go off and execute to that. And so, for example, if you want to be secure, you have to support security from the SOC to the software. Um, for example, if Intel create, created the most secure silicon chip and the ARM created the most secure silicon chip and your OS is completely flawed, like what happens, it's of no value. Conversely, if your OS is, is super secure, your silicon's insecure, it's not really that valuable. So again, these are the types of things you have to do. Um, it has to be scalable, it has to be open, so this is one thing, open is a big one for open fog, because how do you get choosality? So a lot of customers that we see in business is I want to be able to replace this component with this component, that interoperability place. I need that choosality. And then of course, autonomous. 
but to be able to process that data where, where you actually grab it and not rely on that cloud to be present to, to make that decision for you. And then I'll find the last one is I'm a big believer in KISS. Keep it simple. I'll let you figure out what the last S stands for. Um, if it, your solution is not simple, it's going to have a hard time finding market adoption. Um, unlike the LOL uh, thing that Jeff mentioned, I thought that was life over limb. Is that correct? No? So with that, Depends on the context. exactly. I could be a doctor. I was thinking of a doctor when that happened. But uh, that's really what I wanted to show you as a, as a pre preview of what we're doing from an open file consortium perspective. Our first uh, scenario is going to be all about visual security, which is kind of cool, especially since we had that, that security camera takeover where it had a DYN attack.